All right, so I have a, a Motorola uh, CDM 1550. And guys, um, I am uh, very new to this. I've probably spent a couple of weeks painstakingly learning and uh, debugging and screwing things up. And I had someone on a Facebook group ask me how I have my uh, CDM1550 set up for, uh, uh, this is really hard. It's, this is all still on my bench trying to get ready to make a DMR repeater. Uh, this is the uh, MMDVM uh, STM32 uh, card. Uh, I believe it's the version three. It's the blue card. Uh, kicks butt. I've done a bunch of uh, other uh, trial and errors with other boards, like uh, uh, this one right here, with uh, just a pain in the ass with these these trim pots trying to get it to work. This one actually works pretty good on on Yezu uh, Fusion. But I was never able to get it to work on uh, uh, DMR. So, anyhow, uh, I've got my rib rib box here. Uh, I bought that on Amazon, and uh, I'm gonna fire up my software here. And let's see, we're gonna read the radio again. Sorry about the video. I'm just recording this on my. Uh, from my cell phone. All right. So I'm gonna go through the tabs and hopefully this will help you. So let's see. On the uh, radio information tab. So again, sorry for the jerkiness and stuff. Uh, I don't think I've changed anything here. Uh, if this frequency range is not in the ham band, there's a real good YouTube video. Um, again, I haven't changed any of these settings. But there's a really good YouTube video on how to change the radio so it's in the ham band. Um, I'm making a YouTube video that will uh, break this down even farther, but this is really quick. I'm going to go through it all. So, on this, on the basic, I don't think I changed anything. Uh, did not change anything on this or the alert tones or the scan or the menu, uh, the test again, yours might be different than mine, but this is how I have it. Uh, the option board, I didn't change any of that. Okay, so uh, I did not change any of these. I believe I changed these. So the RX audio type is flat audio. Uh, data PP PPT, audio source, flat audio again. Again, this is on the transmitter radio. So, and then I've got the external PPT audio source is the flat audio again. Um, one thing I still have to work on is when I power off these radios, they do not automatically turn on because I do not have a 12 volt DC power wire going to, uh, I think it's accessory pin 10. Don't hold me to it. Um, but that needs to be wired in the back of the radio. So when I do lose power and it comes back on, I don't have to manually press the button to turn it on. Okay, the accessory pins. Uh, this is how I have the transmit one set up. Uh, pin three. Uh, we don't even use pin eight. Uh, there's a lot of YouTube videos that, that show this one being used, but we don't use it on my setting here. So it's just pin three on the transmit. Uh, nothing's on this one. And then the transmit power, uh, I guess you can, you can mess with that if you want. Uh, the last tabs. Uh, 
don't think I changed anything either. And then that's my transmit frequency. Um, programming this was kind of tricky and I'm still, again, I'm, I'm a rookie at this man. So I'm winging this as much as uh, I can. So if you see something wrong, you know, don't criticize me because whatever it is what it is, man. Um, I don't use any of these. Uh, so, okay, so this one's the transmit one. So the bandwidth is uh, 25 kilohertz. Um, I read somewhere, it doesn't matter if you set it for 12 and a half or 25. Um, so whatever, I set it for 25, it works. Squelch type, uh, there's no squelch. So, um, that's what I have on this tab. The timeout is set to the highest setting. Um, what you'll notice on a lot of these DMR uh, talk groups that these guys talk forever and your radio will start chirping like crazy. Um, so I've got this one set for three minutes. Um, that seems to uh, work, especially with the TGIF uh, uh, network talk group. Uh, I forget what the talk group number is. Anyhow, uh, there's the RX signaling scan list. Again, man, I am such a rookie at this. But, uh, yeah, so this is how I have that. Uh, so I've got four channels plugged into the radio. Um, one thing I did have problems with was, uh, uh, where is it? I think I had to change this because when I got my radio, this LS trunking, I think, was always lit and I couldn't figure it out. And I finally changed it to conventional and that fixed it. Again, I'm not a pro here. Don't know anything about, about this radio, but everything that I've done here has seemed to work. So let's go over to now the, uh, the receive side. So let me just pause this. Okay, so I got the cable now into the uh, the receive. By the way, I love these radios, man. I uh, started off with uh, the G GM 300s. I ended up buying these Radius uh, M1225s. Got very, very hot, man. Like super hot. Uh, someone told me don't waste your money and they were absolutely right so if you're watching this and you were the person who told me thanks so well, I'm going to be selling those back on eBay so anyhow I'm going to read the radio on this so this is the receive side alright again radio information This is the one I tweaked, and uh, like I said, there's a really good uh, YouTube video on how to get, if your radio is out of band, how to get it in band. I'll be actually making a long video on step-by-step -step on from day one buying radios that are not programmed and ready to uh, firing it up and, and putting it out to public use, um, but that'll take a while for me to get all the videotaping done so anyhow uh, again here are all the tabs I don't think I changed any of these accessory pins 
Again, the ignition sense, I have to run that wire. Um, receive is flat, flat, flat. Uh, accessory pins. I don't think I got anything on this. Um, anyhow, this is how it's working. So I, I don't know if I changed anything again. TX power. And voice storage. I don't think I changed any of these. So again, you see I've got the reverse, um, home revert. Don't know what the hell that does, but anyhow, I got my receive channels in there. Uh, yeah, I don't have any of my program buttons assigned. I don't press them, so why assign them? Okay, so here's, this one's a 16 channel. I've got the receive and transmit just in case if I want to flip it. So I don't burn out the transmit one. I can easily flip it if I have to. Um, here's the receive. I gave it an alias of the frequency and that's why it shows up there. Uh, this one, the receive is when I'm talking from my uh, Titera MD380. That's narrow band. So I've got set for 12 and a half kilohertz. No squelch. It's a receive only, so I've got this checked. So there's nothing here in the, this gets all grayed out when you check this box. Uh, options, don't have anything. Don't have anything. Nothing, nothing. Nothing. And I guess the data revert is on one, which is the receive. Again, I don't know what that does. Um, I will be learning a lot more about these radios, but this is what I've got so far. And then the other one is the transmit, which we're not going to go into. Uh, we're not doing the uh, LS trunking. Again, conventional. Zone 1. There's the channels. And I hope, uh, hope that uh, helps you. Um, like I said, it's been a learning experience. Uh, yeah, it's been a learning experience. Uh, one thing that, uh, is really cool is running the VM, uh, workstation for programming the, uh, the GM 300s, uh, running a virtual machine of Windows 98. Couldn't believe it that it worked and it worked really, really good. So I'll update those in videos to come, but uh, that's it. And uh, I will be posting this on my channel and that's it. If you're in the uh, Tampa Bay area, uh, hopefully by the time I post this, this will be live. And uh, that's about it. So this is KK4EQF signing off.